Welcome to the Shuttleworth Collection. The collection is part of the Richard Ormond Shuttleworth Remembrance Trust that was set up by Dorothy Shuttleworth in remembrance of her son Richard. Today we mark the 75th anniversary of the untimely death of Richard Shuttleworth, who, whilst taking part in night flying exercises piloting a fairy battle, tragically crashed and died in the early hours of the 2nd of August 1940. Richard Ormond Shuttleworth was born at Old Warden Park on the 16th of July 1909, the only son of Colonel Frank and Dorothy Shuttleworth. Richard was educated at Eton College, where he excelled in the college's School of Mechanics. This is perhaps not surprising, as from a young age he had always shown a fascination for all things mechanical and also being the grandson of the co-founder of the family's engineering business of Clayton and Shuttleworth, a leading manufacturer of agricultural machinery founded in 1842. After leaving Eton, he joined the army and passed out of Sandhurst Military College to join the 16th 5th Lancers. During this time, Richard also followed his late father's footsteps by racing horses in steeplechases. On his 23rd birthday in 1932, Richard came of age. He inherited not only his father's estate, but also that of his uncle Alfred Shuttleworth, who'd had no children, totalling some two million pounds. This inheritance allowed him to pursue many different interests. He started to purchase and restore vintage cars, or old crocs as he referred to them. The first of these was the 1898 Panard Lavassa, that had once been driven by King George V to Ascot. He restored it back to its former glory and drove it regularly in the London to Brighton run. The Panard remains one of the gems of the collection. Richard enjoyed driving fast cars and purchased and raced several in his life. His first was a small Austin 7 with a 7.8 litre supercharged engine which he acquired whilst he was still serving in the army based in Edinburgh. On the 14th of March 1931, he entered the Junior Mountain Handicap at Brooklands under the name R. Ormond, a vain attempt to hide what he was doing from his mother. By the mid-1930s, he owned several Bugattis and Alfa Romeos. His finest triumph came on the 5th of October 1935 when he won the International Donington Grand Prix car race in his Alfa Romeo P3. Some 306 miles or 120 laps of the twisting circuit. His motor racing career came to an abrupt end in January 1936 when he experienced a very serious crash during the South African Grand Prix. The other big passion in Richard's life was flying. He started flying lessons in 1931, and by January 1932 he had purchased his first aeroplane, a de Havilland 60 Moth GEBWD, that is still at the collection today. He became a director of the Comper Aircraft Company, eventually owning several Comper Swift aircraft one of which he flew in 1933, the 6,000 miles to India to take part in the Viceroy's Cup air race. He set up an aerial advertising company and also used his DeSouter aircraft to support his racing activities. His interest in old machinery soon evolved from just cars to include aircraft as well. He purchased the 1909 Blériot and the 1910 Depa Doucin both of which he restored to flying condition. He demonstrated them at Royal Aeronautical Society garden parties throughout the 1930s. His aircraft soon expanded to include First World War aircraft such as the Sopwith Pup. This tradition of demonstrating his aircraft is now continued here at the Shuttleworth Collection during the summer months with our displays. Richard also became the squire of Old Warden, a role that he undertook seriously. He had a keen interest in country pursuits, horse riding and agriculture, becoming the president of the Bedfordshire Agricultural Society. In the late 1930s, he operated the first combined harvester in Bedfordshire, 
Of course, it was a Clayton and Shuttleworth product. It is fitting today that the Shuttleworth Agricultural College and the Shuttleworth Collection, under the umbrella of the Richard Ormond Shuttleworth Remembrance Trust, as set up by his mother in 1944 in his memory, continue his legacy by educating us all in the things that were of most interest to him. We all hope that you have enjoyed your visit here today.